If we were to try and find out what would be the perfect musical instrument, we would have a number of criteria that we needed to fill. We would want something that was easy to play. We would want something that sounded nice. We would want something that uh, looked cool to play. We would want something that would stay in tune. And well, today you are in luck because I am going to show you something that is none of those things. This here is, well, I'm not exactly sure what this is. It is a contraption. It's got three valves. Each valve is slightly longer than the one that comes before it. Uh, it's got eight bells of varying lengths. It rattles because it's not held together very well. And it's got this mouthpiece, which will give you bronchitis, syphilis, and all sorts of other things just by looking at it. And it is actually the only part of the instrument I have bothered to clean, uh, because I fancy not having a case of death after playing this. This instrument is known by a number of names. It is sometimes called a shalmai, uh, which is actually a very old uh, double reeded instrument, um, and this isn't a shalmai, but it's sometimes known as one. It's sometimes called a signal horn, uh, it's sometimes called a martin's trumpet, uh, and there are various other names for it. What I do know, or at least what I have found out, is that they were very popular in Germany. Uh, they were developed sometime in the early 1900s and got uh, reasonably pop popular in the 1920s and they would have bands of these ghastly looking things parading. These come in all various shapes and sizes. This is, as I say, a, a three valved model. Three of the loudest valves you will ever hear. Uh, but they come in everything from two bell models with one valve all the way through to 16 bell models with four valves. How the instrument works is that you blow air in this end. You don't buzz or do anything, you just blow air into it. You use these valves to route the air through to one of these eight chambers. Each of these chambers holds a bell, and at the end of each of these bells inside here is a reed. If I take one of the bells out, you'll see that there is no magic really apart from this end here. We have a tongue, and that uh, sits and vibrates against a shallot, which is this brass piece here. Uh, through a block and then out. We can actually take this part out, or at least I could on some of the other ones. Um, and this tongue vibrates back and forth when air goes through it, and that creates the awful no noise that this instrument makes. Spare a thought for my neighbours who had to listen to this whilst I worked out what the fingering is, because it's unlike any other brass instrument I've ever played. The scale that this instrument plays is in the key of yuck. And if you want to finger it, it starts at nothing, then third, second, second and third, first, first and third, first and second, first, second and third. That is the notes of the ascending scale that this instrument plays. What does that sound like? Well, I'm glad you asked. My neighbours aren't, but I am glad that you asked. The scale sounds like this. The big question that I am left with after pondering and hearing the many awesome, awful sounds of this instrument is, why does it exist? It's not like they didn't have proper instruments back in the early 1900s. Some of the instruments behind me predate the 1900s. In fact, this curved horn there is from 1885. They had options, but they th whoever designed this thought, no, no, I don't want something that plays in tune, plays chromatically, has a decent range, blends well and sounds nice. I want something new. I want something that makes noises at one volume, 
that is ridiculously impractical um, and all the other negatives that come from this. This is the creation of a man with nothing to live for, I, at least in my mind. And what staggers me is that other people saw this and thought, there's a good idea, that's what we need to do. And will you believe it, there are actually bands playing these instruments to this day. There are people in this world who think this is the supreme demonstration of musical capability, uh, even in 2019. So with that hopeful glimpse of humanity, I'm going to end this video. Thank you very much for watching.